Arsenal are pioneers in the era we know as the Premier League. Truly. Manchester United dominated the early days of this era thanks to shrewd management, great recruitment and, importantly, a crop of academy products that would likely do significant damage in today's day and age. Arsenal took a slightly different approach on the personnel front. By the mid-90s, the club had suffered through decline at the onset of this new era after being a strong force in English football through the ages. They needed to do something. Luckily for them, a board willing to take a shot on a relatively unknown Frenchman and the relaxing of rules around transfers of foreigners in the EU was all they needed to reclaim their top spot. All the same, in 1995, before any of that happened, one transfer in particular is very, very high up there amongst the most important of the lot. Heck, it might even be the most important. And that one transfer was that of Dennis Bergkamp, the man with ice in his veins. Thierry Henry, Patrick Vieira, Saul Campbell, Tony Adams, they all needed him to make the dream work, and vice versa, of course. The Dutchman was at the center of all of Arsenal's success in the late 90s and early 2000s. A man with one of the most elegant touches you'll ever see, a mainstay in the Arsenal attack being used in every forward position, an extraordinary leader, and above all else, a certified icon of Arsenal Football Club. In this video, we're going to take a look back on how great of a baller this man truly was and what made him so special. With that being said, how good was Dennis Burkamp really? Yo, what is going on everyone? Really hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinasha and welcome back to the channel. If you think about the word footballer, you have to have something in mind. They will accuse me of short-sightedness, but if I think about a guitarist, I see Keith Richards. But if someone were to wake me up and ask me, footballer, I tend to see Dennis Burkamp. He looks like a footballer to me. Johan Cruyff. Praise doesn't come from places much higher than that. Dennis Burkamp was a genius when it came to having the ball at feet. Schooled in the art of total football where he excelled, it only makes sense that Johan Cruyff firstly acknowledged him and secondly appreciated him. He had a first touch and ability to make decisions that I personally believe is unrivaled in my time of watching English football. His dribbling, balance and physique at six foot made him a real force to be reckoned with. He was slick. I think. I think that's a pretty good description. He also had a bit of a mean streak, lashing out with an elbow or a high stud challenge more than once. Twice voted as the third best player in the world and also named as the second greatest Arsenal player to ever live behind only Thierry Henry in 2008. Despite this, the man is reported as being shy and introverted and has a fear of flying, a stark contrast to his larger than life bold on-field presence. Born in Amsterdam in 1969, Dennis Burkamp was the last of four children born into his family, a working class family where his father was an electrician and also dabbled in the lower divisions in Dutch football. Burkamp followed suit with his interest in football, honing his skills bit by bit. When speaking on how he developed his technique in his childhood, he once said, I was there with my friends every day and you are forced to play a certain way. You don't tackle on the streets because it's quite painful, so you stay on your feet, get the balance right and pass the ball. At the age of 11, he joined Ajax's youth program and has admitted to admiring several players growing up. Amongst those players, Johan Cruyff stood out, of course course, and so did Glenn Hoddle. He always kept his head high, his vision, his control, his balance. English football was so fast then and there were a lot of mistakes, so to see one player who stays calm stood out. And while we're on the subject, just to set the record straight, he liked Hoddle. Hoddle who was a Spurs player for large portions of his career, but Burkamp was never a Spurs fan. Uh, don't get it twisted. Cruyff, who happened to be the manager of Ajax at the time, was thoroughly impressed with the progress that the man was making. In 1986, it was decided that he would get his shot at first team action. His time at Ajax was destined to be great from the very beginning. With the skill set and mentality he had, it was near impossible for a player like him to fail. Not too long following his debut, he became a first team regular. And this is when things started to get crazy. He helped Ajax reclaim the Eredivisie title in 1990 after years of missing out thanks to PSV. And from 1991 through to 1993, he was the top scorer in the Netherlands outright. He was about 24 at this point. You would think he was playing as a striker here, but he actually operated just about everywhere. 122 goals in 239 games. The man was hot property, for sure. So here's a question. Can you guess who was after him? You'll never get it, I promise. It was Real Madrid, I know. 
Shocker. However, times were different back then. Italy was a prime destination for the best footballers on the planet for much of the late 20th century. Also, Johan Cruyff was the Barca manager by that point and I don't think he was the biggest fan of Madrid. According to Burkamp, Cruyff never directly asked him to join him in Spain. He just strongly advised against him going to just about every top team at the time, leaving Barcelona as the only option left. Big brain move. I can't lie. In reality though, Burkamp only had three options in his mind. AC Milan, Juventus, and Inter Milan. Scratch that, two options. Ruud Hullet, Marco van Basten, Frank Rijkaard, and Jean-Pierre Papin were all making their mark at AC Milan at the time, so that was pretty much a lost cause. Inter Milan, it was. 7.1 million pounds. He didn't have the greatest time adapting to the league, there was a physical barrier he had to overcome that made his initial time there quite challenging. A lot of people there tried to hurt you, not just physically, but mentally as well. And coming from the easygoing culture in Holland, I had to adapt a tougher approach. Apart from that, there was the frequent changing of managers, none of who knew how to utilize the Dutchman properly. The setups and tactics at the time were not suited to the man in the slightest. It's easy to say this in hindsight, but the thing about Burkamp is that he operated best when he had someone to play off of and make combinations with up front. In the systems employed at Inter at the time, his deft play and creativity wasn't given a good chance to shine. And I haven't even mentioned his mistreatment by the Italian media, who saw his shyness and introversion as him not caring about the club or the league. It was also at Inter where he developed and solidified his intense fear of flying, reportedly even breaking out in sweats when thinking about the tiny, shaky, claustrophobia-inducing planes that the club would use for away games. Later, at Arsenal, apparently whenever negotiations for anything took place, they would automatically deduct large sums from their offer due to this fear. The man, without fail, would accept this and move on. A lot like Thierry Henry, who was still some years off arriving at Arsenal, it was a less than ideal stint in Italy that preceded his arrival in North London. Despite this, the prospect of the non-flying Dutchman arriving at Arsenal was an interesting one. Anyone paying attention to greater European football knew what the man was capable of, after all. Initially though, that didn't seem to make a difference. He had a tough start to life at Arsenal, going goalless in his first six matches. He scored two on his seventh attempt against Southampton and from then on proceeded to become a pivotal part of Arsenal's setup in the months to come. And then Arsene Wenger arrived. The two immediately hit it off. Their mutual love for elegant yet efficient sequences rendered this a match made in heaven. As soon as Wenger arrived, the tides turned completely for Arsenal. Clean diets, effective training routines and much more all led to a third place finish in his first year. The next year, the Gunners not only won the league but the FA Cup too and Burkamp was at the centre of it all, scoring 22 in all competitions and creating 13 assists. He was also voted as the PFA Players Player of the Year as voted by his own peers and as the FWA Player of the Year as voted by the press. It was unanimous. To put Burkamp's class and sheer quality into perspective, in the August 1997 Goal of the Month competition, Dennis Burkamp finished in first, second and third. Two against Leicester City and one against Southampton. Now I don't have the records on me but I'd be shocked if that's been done by anyone else. The next few years were filled with highs and lows. They were the highs of scoring one of the greatest goals in World Cup history, a late quarterfinal winner against Argentina. They were the lows of missing a penalty in the 98-99 FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United and going on to lose the match. This miss obviously took a shot at Burkham's confidence and overall mentality, but it affected him far more than you think. He refused to take another penalty for the remainder of his career. United dominated the league for the next three years with Arsenal finishing as runners-up each time. Arsenal began to bring in heavy hitters such as Thierry Henry and Sylvain Wiltord as frontmen, limiting Burkamp's game time. And that, along with the departures of teammates Mark Overmars and Emmanuel Petit in 2000, fueled doubts over his future with Arsenal. But that was far from the end of Burkamp's time with them. The winning returned in 2002, and coincidentally, Mentally, Burkamp was back to his best. Another double. It was a great season all round for Arsenal. Memorable, for sure. But amongst all the memories, perhaps the most memorable one is a goal that is instantly recognized by anybody that claims to be a fan of English football. 2nd of March 2002. Newcastle 
vs Arsenal. Burkamp was having a fantastic season all round, but a couple games prior to this match, he had received a three match ban for a red card against Liverpool. This match marked his return to action, and it only took him 11 minutes to leave everyone in a state of shock. Robert Perez controls the ball on the left flank and feeds it low into Burkamp's feet. Only issue is that the ball arrives quite far to his weaker side. In this situation, what do you think the best course of action would be? A. Go back towards your own goal, shielding the ball to retain possession. B. Look for a safe pass to the side or backwards. Or C. Hit the nastiest first touch you ever seen, take the ball around your marker, do a quick pirouette and slot the ball into the bottom right. Let's see how this one pans out. If you look back at the replay, you can tell that this man meant every single movement in this sequence. None of this was luck. The guy was a genius. Simple as. Despite becoming more and more senior, thus having his game time reduced as time went on, Burkamp continued to be an important player in the future success of Arsenal. The invincible season in 2004 is often seen as Arsenal's crowning achievement in Premier League history by a lot of people. Personally, I think the doubles in 2002 and 1997 are leaps and bounds above that, but that's just a matter of opinion. For the purposes of this video, none of that matters. Burkamp was around and was extremely important for each and every one of these wins. By the time the invincible season had come and gone, Dennis Burkamp was about 35 years of age. He did still have a couple more years left in him, but by 2006, his time was truly up. Not many players have had the same impact on a team that Dennis Burkamp has. The man was clearly a footballing force, forged at Ajax, hardened at Inter Milan, and refined at Arsenal. And there's no doubt that it was with the latter that he had his very best years. He may not have had the brash personality and attitude as other early foreign and non-foreign legends of the EPL, but his impact on his club was simply insane. A born winner that will forever be immortalized. To me, he is undoubtedly the smoothest operator in Premier League history. And there we have it. Let me know what you all think about Dennis Burkamp. Feel free to follow all the socials. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I will catch you in the next one.